This is lecture 42 in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about MPO connectors, also called multi-fiber connectors or array connectors. And we're talking, going to talk about the issues of testing them and cable systems that use them. MPO connectors are primarily used with prefabricated cabling systems, which are used either to replace termination in the field with a factory made system, so it breaks out into single fiber connectors, or for parallel connector systems used for parallel multimode transmission systems for 40 gigabit and 100 gigabit ethernet. MPO connectors use a large plastic ferrule with a row of fibers between two alignment pins. There are connectors with pins and connectors with holes, so they mate together. There's also keying, key up and key down. So you have an adapter that aligns the connectors according to their keying scheme. So there are four variations of an MPO connector. Pins, no pins. Key up, key down. And this can cause some confusion in how they're used. Here is a close-up of the Panduit Pan MPO connector. And you can see the row of illuminated fibers between the alignment holes and the ferrule and how large the plastic ferrule is that holds the connectors. What we just saw was a 12 fiber MPO connector, but the standard allows for up to six rows of 12 fibers each for a total of 72 fibers. In actuality, most of these connectors have one or two rows, so they're 12 fibers or 24 fibers. There is, however, a proposal now for 16 fiber rows, for one or two rows, but that's just in the standards committee now, and none of them seem to have been commercially made. As we said, there are four varieties of these connectors, pins and no pins, and key up, key down. That makes having the right cables for patch cords or testing complicated. There is a solution for that, and that's the PAN MPO connector by Panduit, which allows you to select the keying and the pins or holes, pins or no pins, of each of the connectors individually. So you can mate virtually any PAN MPO to any other MPO connector, which is very useful for testing and for patch cords. MPO cables come in several varieties, but the major differences are whether the cables have MPO connectors on either end, or whether they have MPO connectors on one end and break out into single fiber connectors, typically SCs or LCs on the other end. There are many different color codes and polarity options with these connectors, so much that in TIA 568, there's 21 pages of diagrams and notes on how these connectors may be used. So if you do use these connectors, make sure you have documentation of the polarity of the connectors you're using. Breakout cable systems, which break out to LC or SC connectors, are basically used to keep from having to do field termination. You buy a complete factory-made cabling system and just install it. Typically, these are made with MPO to MPO cables in the backbone, 
and modules that have an MPO connector on the back and single fiber connectors like LCs or SCs on the front. And these typically the modules will have the pins for all the cables for the MPO connectors in their own module. So the cables that you use will have no pins. With prefab cabling systems, you don't quite know where to expect the pins. Generally, if there is a backbone cable with patch cords connecting equipment, the pins will be in the permanently installed cable because pins typically go inside of jacks, which are formed with an MPO connector and a mating adapter. The transceivers typically also have pins, so that patch cords have no pins. And that's good because if the patch cords have no pins, there are no pins sticking out of the patch cord connectors that can get damaged by being bent by poor handling. One of the biggest issues with MPO-based cabling systems is testing. I was in a meeting not too long ago when a technical representative of a large test equipment company made the statement that MPO connectors are impossible to test. Well, it's not that bad, but it's not simple. So let's get started talking about testing. And the first thing is they need to be inspected, cleaned, and inspected again. You need to ensure the polarity is correct. You need to test the insertion loss. You may need to do OTDR tests. Did I mention that you test prefab cabling assemblies before and after installation? If the cabling has SC or LC connectors, there's no problem. But MPO, MPO cables are more difficult. The large ferrules of an MPO connector can attract a lot of dust and contamination. And dust on one side of the connector can affect the loss of the fibers on the other side because the ferrule is so big. So basically you need a special microscope adapter to inspect them that requires you scan across the ferrule. And you need special cleaning tools that clean the connectors. If you're cleaning connectors with pins, you may have to use a cleaner that only cleans between the pins. And this can be a problem, but if you're very careful about cleaning them and keeping dust caps on them, they should be okay. We'll test for insertion loss, typically at 850 nanometers, and with an OTDR when we need to do diagnostic work. The easiest testing is with a cable plant that has breakout modules. Then you have single fiber connectors on either end, and you can test each fiber in the cable plant with a standard light source and power meter and single fiber reference cables, just like you would any other fiber cable plant. Likewise with OTDR testing. But remember that you need a high resolution OTDR because most of these cable plants are quite short. And even with a high resolution OTDR, you will probably not be able to distinguish the connectors on either side of a breakout module. So use a high res OTDR. If you use a launch cable, longer than the cable plant you're testing, you will reduce the opportunity to see ghosts, which will make it much more simple to diagnose the cable plant. Likewise, use a relatively long receive cable so you'll be able to make end-to-end -end measurements. And here is the simplest way to make an end-to-end -end measurement on a prefab cable plant. 
as you can see, the LC to MPO modules we're testing here have much too little fiber in them to be able to distinguish either connector on the module. So when you test the module, you'll be testing the loss of both connectors. But what we're doing here is testing the loss of the entire cable plant by going from a marker before the cable plant to a marker after the cable plant and measuring the end-to-end -end loss. A good trick to make that measurement even easier. Use the least squares method of testing on your OTDR. Put your marker before the first connector in the module at the end of your launch cable and put the two least squares markers on your launch cable and your receive cable and you'll be able to measure the loss of the cable plant without including excess cable in the cable plant. At first glance, you could do a simple three cable reference method when you're testing a parallel cable plant. Use breakout modules as your launch and receive reference cables. Attach your source to one of the fibers in the breakout module. Attach that to a reference cable. Attach your meter to an output fiber matching the source input fiber. Attach that to the reference cable, set your reference, take the breakout cables off, remove your reference cable in the middle, add another cable plant to test, and make your measurement. The problem is that only tests one fiber. And you would, in order to test the next fiber, have to reference with that fiber, and the same for every fiber, in the breakout module. So you would be doing 12 or 24 different references and continually mating and unmating the connectors. These connectors are not designed for that many matings. So there is an inherent problem with getting the connectors dirty and wearing them out. So generally speaking, that's probably not the best way to consider to do the tests. Let's look at alternatives. Testing a cable plant that's terminated in MPO connectors on either end is more difficult and it's going to be less accurate. One of the ways of testing them is to attach breakout cables to either end of the cable plant then use a source plus launch cable on one end and a meter plus a receive cable on the other end to make the test. In effect, you're measuring the loss of two extra connectors on either end of the breakout, but it's the simplest way to measure the loss. There are fiber optic power meters available with large area detectors and MPO interfaces. If you have one of those, the testing is fairly simple. You can use the meter with the MPO interface and a single fiber source attached to a breakout cable as a launch cable. You can measure the output of the fiber on the breakout launch cable for your zero reference Attach that to the cable plant you're testing. Use a short receive patch cord MPO to MPO to connect your meter and make the loss. You can just do each fiber separately this way and it actually reduces the uncertainty of the measurement quite a lot. Another method that's slightly more costly but much more efficient is to use a single fiber source and launch cable with a fiber switch that has an output into an MPO connector. Then if you combine that with a meter with a large area detector you can 
work your way through each fiber individually. And you can use the meter to calibrate and check the output of the fiber switch. But the manufacturers of these say the uncertainty of the switching is less than a few hundredths of a dB. So it's a very efficient, fast, and looks like relatively easy way to get measurements with relatively low measurement uncertainty. The simplest solution, of course, is to just buy one of the parallel optics test sets. They're expensive, but if you're going to test a lot of these cables, the expensive test set will work so fast and efficiently that it will pay back its investment in no time. OTDR testing is actually quite a bit easier than insertion loss testing, especially if you have breakout cables on either end that are long enough to act as launch and receive cables. Then all you have to do is to switch your OTDR to each fiber in the cable and make your measurements. Even easier is to use a high-res OTDR and a fiber switch. And then you can plug right into the cable plant and step through each of the fibers sequentially to do your testing. Basically with an OTDR, you would do an end-to-end -end loss test and examine the trace for high loss or high reflectance at any of the connector interfaces in the cable plant. With a good high-res OTDR, you can see most of the cables themselves, and you can see probably everything but the fibers within any of the breakout modules in a prefab cable plant. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the international nonprofit professional society of fiber optics. We have more than a hundred other videos here on YouTube, a thousand pages of technical information on our website, and schools around the world that can train and certify you in fiber optics.